Olympic champions, two distinct eras in heavyweight history. The story of the aging champion coming back to challenge the new kid on the block takes us back to the turn of the century. James J. Jeffries won the heavyweight title back in 1899. After seven successful title defenses, he retired undefeated in 1905. But five years later, the 35-year-old Great White Hope returned to challenge the reigning champion, Jack Johnson. Jeffries was stopped in the 15th. In 1937, Joe Lewis began his 12-year reign of terror in the heavyweight division. In his prime, the Lewis right hand was a lethal weapon. But in 1951, after losing a comeback title fight to Ezard Charles, a 37-year-old Joe Lewis lost to the heir apparent to the heavyweight throne, Rocky Marciano. In the 60s and 70s, the greatest, Muhammad Ali, ruled the division with a grace and a flair for the dramatic. But at the age of 38, a 31-year-old champion clipped the wings of the butterfly and took the stinger out of the bee. Larry Holmes would rule the heavyweight division for seven and a half years. And now, a 38-year-old former champion steps out of retirement and into the ring one more time. The new undisputed heavyweight champion stands menacingly in his way. They cheer for me, it's great, you know what I mean? But throughout my career, they always been against me because of you guys. You say what you feel, write what you feel. You feel that I'm gonna lose, write it. Don't bite your tongue about it. But when you see me win, you write it. Larry Holmes was an underappreciated boxer whose frustrations led to no-win feuds with the press. As a former sparring partner of Muhammad Ali, Holmes first was downgraded as championship material. Even his courage was questioned. A thrilling victory over Ken Norton for the title only temporarily silenced skeptics. This has been a great boxing show. Both fighters courageous as Holmes comes back. Goes a good Those people said that I couldn't be anything, gave me the desire, they gave me the motivation, they gave me the determination to show that I can. And when I did that, I said, I showed you, I told you. In the post-Ali era, not even a gallant comeback against killer puncher Ernie Shavers earned Holmes the respect he craved. He became a champion. Ali was a hero. And beating up the 38-year-old hero surely ended one era, but didn't start his. Ali's my idol. If you want to say that I'm in the shadow of Muhammad Ali, I'm a comic cop, great. I still admire the man. I still love the man even today. And I hate when people sit down beside me and say, man, it's a shame. I don't want to see that happen to you. When an unproven white challenger, Jerry Cooney, got more recognition than he did before their fight, Holmes' disappointment turned to bitterness. I felt like two cents fighting Jerry Cooney. I wish Jerry Cooney at the time was black because um, then people would just root for the best fighter, not for the color of their skin. Don King and Dennis Rappaport, they sold racism. They never really gave me my, uh, my just dues. Uh, they really didn't think I ever had the ability. Holmes' bitterness blinded him to the recognition that he did win and he thought that equaling Rocky Marciano's 49-0 record would win it. But Michael Spinks upset him, and the bitterness showed. Spinks, the aggressor, by combinations by Michael Spinks. You got three minutes to the champion. It's the last goddamn round. Over here, you're punching your punch with him. You think you're here. You gotta go after him. This is no tomorrow, you hear me? Holmes will not do it. Looking for the one punch. It's just about out of time. This one is over. Listen to the crowd. If you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. You know what I mean? And they hurt me that night. They took away something that I worked 19 years for. Heavyweight Championship of the World. I mean, if you really 
really want to get techno about the whole thing. Rocky couldn't carry my jock strap. I could have said things in a different manner. When I said Marciano couldn't carry my jock strap, the other day I said it to the newspaper the other day that Mike Tyson can't carry my jock strap. Are you going to make a big thing out of it? Holmes had always been credited with being an intelligent fighter, but criticizing fight officials before the rematch with Spinks was anything but. I learned that these guys get drunk when they go to judge fights. It was a good idea for Holmes to win decisively after that. Most observers thought Holmes had pulled it out with a determined effort. Surprise, the judges didn't. And then still. And I can say to the judges, the referees, the promoters, the kids where the sun don't shine. And since we're on HBO, that's my big black behind. And people say, you shouldn't have said that, Larry, on national TV. Well, they did it till they kicked my behind right on national TV. Nobody said anything about that. Now Holmes has another bad idea, insulting Mike Tyson. I'm going down to history, not Mike Tyson. He go down to history as an SOB. If he do happen to win the fight, down the line, he's going to destroy himself. So at 38, Larry Holmes still has the dexterity to put both feet in his mouth. The issue tonight is whether he has the dexterity to fight Mike Tyson. The issue tomorrow may very well be whether he will be remembered for the outstanding fighter he really was. And so Larry Holmes will try to do what Jersey Joe Walcott did at age 37, only Holmes will try to do it at age 38. A grandfather, and has there ever been one before that's fought for or won a heavyweight championship? Walcott did it against Ezra Charles. He knocked him out in 1951, but remember, Jersey Joe Walcott never stepped away from the ring as Larry Holmes has. And he was a knockout fighter who caught his opponent with one great punch. Not likely to happen tonight. 17 years the difference between these two. Second largest age difference in a heavyweight title fight. Of course, Patterson Floyd Patterson knocking out Archie Moore, who was then 42 years old. At least. Archie Moore, incidentally, quarter is saying he gives Larry Holmes a chance. Wouldn't you know it? Well, maybe that's why he's so much interest is generated in this fight. We've got all the... Uh, and also the the great people out there. This fight has really brought him out. Celebrity count here probably as big as I've ever seen. Well, certainly in Atlantic City. <laughs> Kirk Douglas, who came to prominence doing a fight, a, a movie called Champion, from a short story by Ernest Hemingway. Beautiful singer, ladies and gentlemen. And that is only part of the celebrity crowd that's on hand here. The heavyweight champions to regain the heavyweight title. Floyd Patterson, of course, knocking out Ingmar Johansson in 1960. The last one, memorable, wasn't it? Tim Witherspoon and Tony Tubbs, a dog of a fight. If I was an editor, I would have to say I'd cross that one out. My general principle. Hardly falls into one of the great moments in sports. And 15 years ago tonight, George Foreman defeated Joe Frazier. Tonight, George Foreman's 40th birthday, and of course, he's trying to make a comeback. At 40 years of age, he considers himself a bona fide contender down the road for Mike Tyson's title. Larry Holmes, incidentally, coming back saying this isn't only for the money. That question has been asked all along. He says it's not only for the money. He says it gives me the opportunity to kick back. I wonder where Larry is. Is he having second thoughts? <laughs> Just playing a little bit of a tactical game. Speaking of playing games, who's that? I know that guy. I know that guy from somewhere. I can't place him. <laughs> and right in front of him, Michael Spinks. So a couple of the boxing greats, I think it's fair to say, Barbara Streisand, and Don, Don Johnson. Johnson. It's your old tennis partner. It's my buddy. Played with him in Aspen, not terribly long ago. And here, of course, perhaps the most familiar face, present company included, I think it's fair to say, <laughs> in the sport of boxing, and Donald Trump, our host. Ladies and gentlemen, two-time Academy Award winner here at ringside, Mr. Jack Nicholson. In a sense, 
Larry Holmes continues to just sit it out, putting everybody, this crowd, not Mike Tyson so much, but everybody else on ice for the moment. Yeah, in a sense, this big crowd is here as a tribute to Holmes because the promotion itself just has gone out of sight quite unexpectedly by everybody who was close to it. They're really stunned by the response to this. And uh, in a way, it's saying, yeah, Larry Holmes was a quality athlete, a champion for seven years. How many great looking prospects, short term champions there were in that time who couldn't sustain it? And this man did. And he is still, judging by this crowd and uh, the audience we know that's out there in television land, uh, regarded as one of the marquee names uh, presently in boxing. The convention center in Atlantic City coming to the ring. The former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. So there's the big fella. As you know, from Eastern in Pennsylvania, known as the Eastern Assassin, but here's the man of the moment. This is Mike Tyson. And Mike defending the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world here. And what a menace Mike Tyson proved to be. 28 fights, 28 straight wins. 22 years of age. And the recent form of Tyson's has been very, very good. Wins over Terrell Biggs, Tony Tucker, Pickton Thomas, Bonecrusher Smith, Trevor Burbick. Here he comes. So there he is then, the most successful, most punishing heavyweight on the planet. But i got to say, I've got a, a lawful lot of regard here for Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight champion. 48 wins, two defeats, 34 wins inside the limit. The only two losses, by the way, on the record were very contentious against Michael Spinks, looking to uh, equal the record set by Rocky Marciano of uh, 49 and 0. And there you are, Mike Tyson, 32 straight wins, 28 inside the limit. That uh, 1985 defeat to Michael Spinks went down as the upset of the year, according to Ring Magazine, and I can understand why. I actually had uh, Holmes winning both of those fights. So there's the tail of the tape. Holmes 10 pounds heavier with a four inch, uh, sorry, a 10 inch longer reach. But as you can see, he's a lot older, 17 years in it. So there you are, there are the uh, statistics of when Tyson fought Biggs and Tucker, and Holmes really fought Spinks, too, and Cooney. And there's not a great deal between them, is there? Holmes is slightly busier the two. In fact, uh, Tyson more accurate. And that could be the big difference between the pair of them. The Holmes jab, a very regular punch, and they are the rules. No standing eight count, which is good. And no three knockdown rule, which is even better. Before the official introductions, I would like to acknowledge a man here in the ring who is indeed a man of heavyweight history in 1960. He was an Olympic gold medal champion. In 1964, he became the heavyweight champion of the world. In 1974, he again won the heavyweight title. And in 1978, he became the only man in heavyweight history to win three world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, the former three-time heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali! <laughs> Muhammad Ali! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
Yes, beaten by Larry Holmes in a shameful matchup eight years previously. And now, Don King Productions and the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino present heavyweight history. This bout is presented in association with the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. It is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard, Chairman Jerry Gormley, Deputy Commissioners Nick D. Balistrari and Lawrence Wallace, representing the World Boxing Council, its President Jose Suleiman, and ringside supervisor Dwayne Ford. Here for the World Boxing Association, Legal Counsel James J. Bins, Esquire. The three judges doing the scoring for this contest, Rudy Ortega, Nicasio Drake, and Charlie Spina. The timekeeper is Lindsey Tucker, counting for the knockdown seconds, Frank Cappuccino. Chief ringside physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett, also in attendance, Dr. Charles Wilson and Dr. Stanley Eden. And the referee for this bout is Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks with red trim and weighs 225 and three quarter pounds. From Easton, Pennsylvania, his professional record, 48 victories, only two defeats, 34 KOs. For seven and a half years, he ruled the division as an undefeated champion with 20 successful defenses. Tonight, he's the challenger. Ladies and gentlemen, the man known as the Eastern Assassin, former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Ho! And in the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks, Weighing 215 and three quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the home, hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Tassimato. His professional record, a perfect 32 and 0, 28 KOs, 23 KOs in four rounds or less, and 16 knockouts in the first round. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you the undefeated Undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. The undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, then Iron Mike Tyson, taking on Larry Holmes here. A former WBC heavyweight Holmes. champion, lost the title in his 20th defense. Right, but what a great fighter he is, a great boxer, I should say. Beautiful left hand, very much in the Muhammad Ali role. And don't forget he'd beaten Muhammad Ali back in 1980 in a very uh, cynical matchup. So Mike Tyson then, the most destructive heavyweight of his generation. Coming up for round one here against Larry Holmes a master boxer with a great boxing brain. Tyson, a real student of the sport. And as you can see, Tyson starting very quickly here. Holmes hanging on, referee Joe Cortez breaks them up. And this Atlantic City Convention Centre absolutely buzzing. Holmes trying to contain Tyson in these early moments. Easier said than done. Well, Tyson there rips in with the left hook. And there's an old saying that the boxer will always beat the fighter. And of course, uh, that's not always true. Tyson, a much, much better boxer than he's ever given credit for. Amazingly quick and very, very powerful. Harry Holmes from 
Eastern in Pennsylvania, known as the Eastern Assassin. Well, he's just trying to stand his toes here. Use the left hand to fend Tyson off, but Tyson just knows all about Larry Holmes. He's been studying him for years too. So watch the way Tyson manages to snake under and around that left hand of uh, Larry Holmes. The left hand of Larry Holmes, in fact, has done so much damage over the years. He has some very decent fighters. The right hand's pretty mean too. You just cast your mind back to the way he knocked out Alfredo Evangelista. An absolutely stunning punch. Well, Larry Holmes hasn't done a great deal of work in this opening session. Took a good left hook there. Well, this could just be Larry Holmes taking a good look at the man in front of him to see exactly what he's capable of, feel the weight of his punches and see how he can be exploited. Joe Cortez did his best there, trying to get these two lads to break up without getting physically involved. Well, up a gut there from Holmes. And again, no problems for Tyson, though. So the undefeated Mike Tyson, 34 straight wins, 28 inside the limit. He's made six defences so far of the WBA and WBC titles. And this is third defence of the combined championships, IBF, WBC and WBA. There's Larry Holmes, of course, who made 19. Successful defence of the WBC title. I've got to take you back to the time he fought uh, early shavers for the second time in Caesars Palace. Only Shavers landed the most almighty punch you've ever seen in your life. Completely poleaxed Larry Holmes. But Larry got up and stopped him a couple of rounds later. And to this day, I still don't know how. Into round two then of a scheduled 12 rounder. At stake, of course, the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. The richest prize in sports. Held at the moment by Mike Tyson in the black shorts. When Tyson won this title, he became the youngest heavyweight champion in the history of the sport, relegating Floyd Patterson, of course, to number two. Well, good left hook there from Tyson. Tyson there belying that uh, fighter's tag that he has. As I said, he's a very smart boxer at times with a very good boxing brain. As rough as they come, but talented as well. That nice little uppercut again there from Larry Holmes. He did that in the first round as well a couple of times. Oh, Tyson there, not averse to using the forearm. Yeah, watch your elbow, says referee Cortez. Oh, a nice strike there for Larry Holmes. Well, a bit more success for Holmes in this round, but uh, overall, of course, Tyson still looking very much in charge. Go, 
Mike Tyson, 5 feet 11 inches tall, Larry Holmes, 6 feet 3. But Tyson once again showing that that's no downside for him as the bell ends the round. Well, what can you tell? Mike Tyson at this point. He's probably what Kevin Rooney is thinking. Let me hold him. Bullshit. Bullshit. Don't tell me I ain't holding you tight. You're not punching me. Let him hold you. Don't hand me that crap. Spit down the book. We don't have another bucket. Now spit down that one. Go ahead. Now take that. Give me the mouth, please. Just wait. You're going to do one jab, one decent jab in your land. You're going to put pressure on this guy, Michael. You're going to punch him. So a bit of replay here then from that particular session. Tyson goes in, lands a big punch there, almost to the kidney, but a sweeping left hook that grazed the chin. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So the Eastern Assassin then gets ready here. To do hostilities in round three. And as you heard there, Rooney chatting to Tyson in a pretty tough manner, which I like. Keeps fighters on their toes. And one thing, of course, Larry Holmes has always done is he's punched through the left hand. And that's actually, albeit a very successful former in the past, against Mike Tyson, it's not proving it to be that way because when you punch through an opponent, you, you actually get closer to them. And that doesn't suit Holmes at all. Of course, he can't just flick out his jab. He's not made that way. So when he commits himself to the left hand, he's actually very, very in range for Tyson. Break out, break out, let's go, break out of there. Come on. So the old master then, Larry Holmes, almost 40 years of age, against the man barely in his 20s here. This could be a case of the king is dead. Long live the king. Right, break out, team, let's go, get his arms out, get him out. Let's go. Good left hook there from Tyson, very quickly. Close the gap. All right, get the arms out, come on. All right, break! Break out, team! Break out, don't punch him. Let's go. A very, very good state of alertness here from Tyson. He's got that look in his eye, he's incredibly determined. And Holmes at this point. Still looking a wee bit bemused by the, uh, the sheer speed and ferocity of Tyson. Holmes doing uh, his part, he was trying to box his way to victory. But it's awfully difficult when you've got a man who keeps charging down on you. And Holmes not getting the time or space to use those very silky skills that he used to have not that long ago. Good right there from Tyson, and a big left hook over the top on the belt. Well, Larry Holmes almost saying, just you wait till the next round. Well, if uh, 
Holmes does win this one, it will shock the world. Big one, big one, big one. Big one. I've got to remind you, of course, uh, about some spectacular wins that uh, Holmes has had. To say only shaves a couple of times, beat Mike Weaver, Alfredo Evangelista, and an absolute cracking knockout. Ken Norton. Come on now. You know, some, some very good names. We'll have to a bit of replay here from the third round. I think this is towards the end. In fact, it was. The right hand there from Tyson over the top. Almost knocked the gum shield out. Then the left hook right on the bell. Holmes has also beaten other men, Bokosha Smith, Marvis Frazier, Tim Witherspoon, yeah. Jerry well, Cooney. No, you got it. Who, got it? Who got it? Leon Spinks, of course, Mike's brother, and Trevor Burbick. <laughs> Round four of a schedule 12. Mike Tyson in the menacing black shorts, black boots, no socks against Larry Holmes. A silky smooth former heavyweight champion of the world. On his feet now, on his toes, poking up that jab. And that's, of course, what we've expected from Larry Holmes, but we haven't had it so far. Now we've got it. What could Tyson do about it? And this is looking very good now for Larry Holmes. If we can only keep up this approach, Tyson tries to get close to him. But of course, Larry Holmes can't do this for 15 rounds, not at his age. Only 40 years of age. Ali tried it and failed against Larry Holmes. Holmes, incidentally, a former Muhammad Ali sparring partner. That's where he learned his tricks. And that's where he probably adopted his style as well. Oh, goodness, we want a right hand there from Tyson. And Larry Holmes on his back here in round four. But well, he's beaten the count. That was a very, very heavy right hand. Well, Holmes says he's OK. And just put your mind back to the night when Ernie Shavers cracked him as well. How did Holmes beat that one? He's down again, second time. Not too convinced about that particular knockdown, but it may well have been a right hand on the temple. Seven, how do you feel? Eight, you all right? So Joe Cort Cortez counts to eight again. And Mike Tyson now, very menacing. Larry Holmes surviving on pure courage, pure instinct. And again, that Tyson right hand. Oh, and he's got him again. Holmes on very shaky legs here in the fourth. Tyson desperate for that knockout blow to land. Well, he's not rushing in Tyson, is he? Just picking the right punch. And this now looks awfully painful. Oh, what a punch that was. Oh, and he's gone again, and the legs absolutely collapsed underneath him. So, Larry Holmes then absolutely flattened here in the fourth round. A bevy of punches there from Mike Tyson. He never let up, did he? Mike Tyson... Still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, but Larry Holmes, they're completely flattened, and when the legs buckle underneath you like that, you know it's a bad one. Get this man out of so here. what on earth pulled Holmes off the floor to walk into trouble like this? Well, he's uh, getting crowded here. But Gamely wants to climb up. That was a shattering win, though, for Tyson. Well, Tyson back on his, uh, sorry, my apologies, Holmes back on his feet then. And, uh, well, he looks OK. Watch this again. Blistering attack here from Mike Tyson. Crunching right hand there. 
And that's the one that started it all off. And this were, these are the combinations that finished it. What a right that was. That was still the first one, but from the reverse angle. And that's the overhead version. The elbow almost following through there. The final knockdown was a devastating one. As I say, Holmes's lace collapsed underneath him. That was the second one. Tyson absolutely relentless. Once again, the second knockdown there from the reverse angle. And this should be the overhead version. Oh, nothing particularly conclusive there. But this should be the final uh, knockdown of the entire fight and, of course, the fight itself. As Tyson found himself hitting an unguarded target and that was on the chin that was smack on the point of the chin watch this again Harry Holmes a bit disorganized the gum shield almost out of his mouth and when that final right hand landed it was perfect and that was the one and you see that left leg there buckled underneath the former champion And this is sheer courage and survival instinct. But of course, it only got him into the fourth round. So still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, then Mike Tyson at the age of 22. What is left for him? The end comes at two minutes, 55 seconds of the fourth round. The winner and still the undisputed, undefeated, Yes, indeed, then Iron Mike Tyson came in the ring as champion. He'll leave it as champion.